Hi everybody, Eric Alexander at Tecton Design here. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite speakers, the Tecton Design Moab, and the new variant that we're offering. As of today, it will be on the website in the next day or two. I want to start off with a phone call that I received from the late Albert von Schweiker. And this was shortly before he passed away. He called me to congratulate me and to talk about how much he liked what we were doing with these patented tweeter arrays on specifically the Moab and the Ulfbert. <clears throat> now, I've garnered 16 Product of the Year awards and three specifically for this model here, the Tecton Moab. And as far as I'm concerned, that call that I got from Albert von Schweikert was the equivalent to a Product of the Year award. In my opinion, if you do your homework and look at what the man accomplished, he's probably the greatest loudspeaker designer of his generation. So to have him call me in a humble way and just express how much he liked what we were doing, I think speaks volumes about what we're doing here. So specifically, what I want to talk about is how we take this tweeter array that has six seven motors here, seven motors here, <clears throat> moving a third of a gram very precisely, very accurately to produce all of the mid-range. That's exactly what it does. <clears throat> and how good is it? I have a client that's here in this area, Hi Tori, and uh, I have to tell you, he spent a lot of time, he has a pair of Moabs, to be perfectly clear. He has a pair of Moabs with the beryllium center just like this here. He spent a lot of time doing room treatment, very, uh, just a lot of time really perfecting his room treatment. And then upstream, he has the Pass Labs XA30, a Pass Labs preamplifier, and he's got very quiet <coughs> streaming source, and uh, he nailed it. I. <clears throat> How good is the mid-range? We've had clients and prospective clients come by and get demos. And it's always fun to be behind them when they're receiving the demo and to just see their heads shake in disbelief, just in utter disbelief. That's how good the mid-range is. So what I want to do next is define what I believe my opinion of mid-range is. I'll go back to Albert von Schweikert. There's a guy that was a musician. So I'm a lifelong musician. I know what every musical instrument in the orchestra sounds like. I've traveled, played in bands. I know what all the instruments sound like. So that's a good reference. Now mid-range is where the meat on the bones is in music. It's the critical element. I will never forget. I will just never forget. It makes me smile today. Uh, how we went to the 2018 Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, we took, we had encores, we had Moabs, we had um, the impact monitor, and I'd never, I've been an audiophile for 43 years, I've never heard this um, said in my life, and I doubt anyone that's watching this video for the next few years is going to have heard this either, but what we heard there was perfect mid-range, no joke, perfect mid-range. So what is perfect mid-range? And I even received a, another one of those ultimate compliments from Peter McGrath at Wilson Audio when he heard it for the first time. His words were, at least he got the mid-range right. So again, that's, that's a compliment that I will never forget. Now, it was a little teeny speaker, so I can see why he could say he got the mid-range right and not the whole speaker right, because they make very large speakers. And... We make large speakers too. I'll circle back on the large speakers. So what's perfect mid-range? I'll tell you what it is, because there's a lot of speakers that have great mid-range, but perfect mid-range is being able to sit in the equilateral triangle point for the listener and to have linear frequency response, have, it, have the right balance compared to the bass and the treble, and then the sense of scale. Some of the best mid-range speakers I've ever heard are electrostatics. I think a lot of people would agree. That's why there's such a great market and a desire for those speakers. Well, what we have here is an electrostatic 
size, but with 80 to 90% less moving mass. And it plays dynamically loud, very loud, if you need to go loud. So what I mean by perfect midrange is that you can sit in your seat and close your eyes and everything's the right size, it's coming from the right point in space, it's all the right scale, and the midrange is spectacular. That's what I mean by that. Now, <clears throat> if we've nailed, theoretically, if we've nailed the midrange on the Moab, let's talk about the rest of the speaker. One of, another person that I really admired was um, John Dunlevy. John Dunlevy, <clears throat> his early designs, and right up until the day that he passed away, everything he did was based in symmetry. I studied the man, read his articles, read everything he had to say, I listened to his speakers, and I agree with this, and I agree with this. So vertical symmetry, meaning that this is the dividing line, this is where I want to have my clients, eyes and ears, perfectly lined up at this point here, and then everything we do below that is identical to everything we do above that. So that helps us get things in the right scale and in the right order for the listener. So we've got a phenomenal tweeter here, one of the best tweeters that's ever been devised in the history of hi-fi, the beryllium satori. <clears throat> I love the thing. Every time I measure it, it's about the best tweeter that I've ever measured. So that's sitting right there. So we get the mid-range right, we get the treble right, and then how do you get the bass right? <laughs> it's, it's easy. You put it in the right size box. My last video on the 1812, I talked about how about 85% of every speaker produced, including audiophile offerings, is in the wrong size box. So we put it in the right size box, and then we get the bass right. The, the, the bass weighting sounds right, the F3 goes down very low, everything's very easy to drive, it's absolutely effortless. It's kind of like um, the hammer butterfly or the Muhammad Ali float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. This thing is so delicate, so nuanced, you can hear the most subtle things in the music, and then you can turn it up for the moments when you get in a raucous mood and you want to do Led Zeppelin, The Who, Bon Jovi, ACDC, pick your, pick your um, heavy metal rock type approach, which by the way, in my opinion as a musician, should never be played back at 80 dB. You want to turn it up and you want to feel it and you want to get that visceral dynamic effect and this will do it. Now if you want to get even more precise and even more visceral we have two other offerings for this speaker. The first one is, is the all beryllium package. And it's no secret, uh, we have carved out our niche in affordable hi-fi. And the all beryllium package um, <clears throat> maybe doesn't, equi doesn't quite exactly qualify as a affordable hi-fi. And so I believe that that's in the $20,000 range for the pair. However, that all beryllium package where we do all of these in beryllium, I gotta tell you, um, I've heard one other speaker do mid-range better, but it costs as much money as a house, and um, most of us aren't too interested in that or can afford it. So it could just be about the best mid-range that you could buy at any price. And then like my last video, I talked about how many speakers there are that are out there that are in that thirty to forty thousand dollar category, and for twenty thousand dollars, spend twenty thousand dollars buy a Rolex, you'll be happier. That's just my candid opinion there. Now, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, we have a brand new offering, and it's this speaker right here. So, if you want that extra performance, that extra uh, <clears throat> element to the mid range, I'm going to recommend this brand new speaker here that we've done all the mid range in a ceramic driver. So what the ceramic can theoret theoretically get you over the soft dome is that when this is really under pressure, it's going to behave as a perfect piston. It's not going to distort. If we looked at this at high levels with a laser interferometer, all tweeters, if you look at them at high levels, all fabric dome tweeters, you'll see that their surface doesn't behave as a, as a dome it starts to get undulations in it. So that's why we offer this. So if you want a little more precision, 
we offer this, I believe, starting at 6100. That's available today. Now I want to talk another minute about big speakers. I love what Alex Rosner talks about. And, and if you don't know Alex Rosner, go on YouTube, research the guy. Look at his Red Bull videos. This guy's the greatest audio designer in history. He came on the scene at just the right time in the, in the glory years of hi-fi. Now, what's an audio designer? Today, it would be termed as an audio installer or an audio integrator. And that's what he did through the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, and the 80s. And um, uh, the more I learn about him, he's a bit of a personal hero to me. But you'll discover in some of his videos where I, I, I have to mention one where he talks about <clears throat> a owner of a restaurant said, I want to put a pair of clip horns in my kitchen, in my restaurant. Well, his kitchen turned out to be 10 feet by 14 feet. He says, well, do you think those are too big? And Alex said, no, not too big at all. In fact, you can't have a speaker that's too big. And this is something that I have been preaching for years. So take a look. I'm 5'9", and this, this is the Moab, okay? The best speakers on earth are big. The best sounding speakers on earth are big. Where's the evidence for that? If you look at the world's finest speakers, the world's finest speaker creators, um, the, the Wilson Audios, the YGs, the Magicos, the Wisdoms, things like that, they're, they're, their upper end speakers are big. They're taller than people. But they have to be, okay? They have to be. The best speakers on earth are big. And whoever tells you something other than that, in my opinion, has little man syndrome. And um, the best speakers are big. That's just how it works. Okay? Now, if you're worried about a big speaker doing a vanishing act, get on a plane, come here. I'll uh, hopefully talk my client into giving you a demo. You can hear a vanishing act. These speakers utterly disappear. I'm not going to talk about how to make your speakers disappear because, frankly, I don't necessarily want to have the people that love my competition or my competition um, hone in on how I believe to make <clears throat> or my logic in making speakers disappear. But big speakers sound better. Uh, end of story. I would debate that with anybody. And especially where they really dominate is in the sense of scale. Again, we can take a, we can take a little teeny mini monitor and get a great sound out of it. But that's an audiophile attribute. That's not necessarily live exacting what real music. In other words, go to the go to the orchestra at a practice session. Stand behind the conductor. Close your eyes. Take a mental note. What does that sound like? Okay? You can't get that scale out of a mini monitor. You never will. It sounds great, and that's an audiophile attribute. So I want to be a little concise there so that I don't <clears throat> get anybody upset. And anyway, that's enough about the Moab. This speaker sounds spectacular. I've heard it. We garnered three Product of the Year awards for this thing, so we're just not making this stuff up. This is a phenomenal speaker. And we've only uh, we've had this thing in existence for five years. We've only honed it and refined it. And <clears throat> so again, just a brief on the on the ceramic that's going to give you that exacting detail through the mid-range so precise so exacting and it's very affordable 6100 for the pair and then this is the one that we just pretty much sell the most of <clears throat> this would have a little warmer smoother um, just just a little if less listening fatigue over the long run things like that so anyway that's probably enough for today and Thanks for watching.